else going on? I stop. I got a flat tire. Mm-hmm. And I stopped, and somebody stopped to help me. And when I turned my back, they tried to shoot me. So here's what investigators and prosecutors believe really happened here on the side of the road is that it was some sort of a setup for a staged suicide so Alec Murdoch would be killed and leave $10 million to his surviving son, Buster. So how do they say he did it? They say that he had help with, from someone else. Curtis Eddie Smith, also known as Cousin Eddie, who was on the witness list. Cousin Eddie followed him, followed Alec Murdoch here, and he was the one who fired the weapon that struck Alec Murdoch in the head, but didn't kill him. Now, Murdoch and Smith both allegedly admitted to all of this to investigators, saying that it was, yeah, it was about the money, the $10 million for Buster Murdoch to collect. Does it make sense? Is that what, what really happened here? Or was it an attempt by Alec Murdoch to once again look like the victim uh, of something like his wife and son were the victim of something, that someone was out to get the Murdochs? So I think for this jury, they've got to try to figure all of that out. And what the key to all of it may be is the testimony of Cousin Eddie if and when he takes the stand and tells the jury what happened here on the side of the road. What happened on the side of the road? Bizarre part of, of, of this story. Probably the most bizarre. Let's bring back in Chanley Painter, Matt Harris, Joseph Scott Morgan, who are with us. Uh, Chanley, I want to start with you. The judge today, um, this, this came up in court, right? It did come up in court. The prosecutor wanted to continue the hearing outside the juror's presence, but they were expected to be back. So the judge put a pause on that, but he wants to hear testimony surrounding the roadside shooting and whether or not the jury will be able to hear about it sometime this week. We know that Curtis Eddie Smith is subpoenaed to testify for prosecutors, and we expect him to take the stand sometime this week. Now, with all the financial testimony coming in, it may delay Curtis Eddie Smith being here, but he'll be transported here, maybe stay at the jail, uh, brought into this courtroom, and it'll be huge. You know, when he testifies, what he will say, Fitz News even reporting that on that roadside, Vinny, that Curtis Eddie Smith alleges Alec Murdoch confessed to him. So we'll see. Wow, that would be... All right, Justice Scott Morgan, how difficult... He gets grazed by a bullet in the side of the head. He's bleeding. Like, if... I mean, if it's, if it's a an attempted suicide and, and, and they didn't succeed or they're just trying to make it look like someone's out to get them. How difficult is it to shoot someone in the head and, and purposely not kill them? Uh, it's not very difficult at all. As a matter of fact, Cousin Eddie is in fact compelling, but for me as a forensics guy, uh, I would love, absolutely love to have the attending physician uh, that treated him that day uh, testify in this case because he did sustain uh, what's referred to as a fracture of his parietal area of his of his uh, skull. And if you'll just kind of put your hand up here above your ear and to the rear right here, that's the parietal bone kind of extends up here behind the temporal bone. And that can be brought about as a result of this kind of concussive blast. So you'll have a graze that's right through here, but here's the key Vin, and something you need to keep your eyes on is that you're not going to accomplish this from a great distance. So if the weapon is applied uh, kind of to the side of the head like this, as opposed to straight on like someone that was intention intending to take their life, you'll still have a powder deposition right here. And you'll get kind of a, a burning in this area. The, the skin will have uh, kind of a, not charred, but almost bacon-like quality to it as the round travels rearward. And we still don't know the direction of the round. Was it from the rear to the front or from the front to the rear? And again, you need medical personnel to kind of talk about it. As a matter of fact, it would probably behoove the prosecution to get those files into the hand of a forensic pathologist because they do living forensic pathology and have them take a look at it, give an assessment. Let's hear about it. All right, Matt, what can you tell us about Cousin Eddie? Well, he's going to have a credibility problem if they put him on the stand because his story has changed multiple times throughout this whole thing. At one point, he didn't shoot him, and then there was a tussle, and he did shoot him, and he threw out the gun uh, into one of the, the rivers and the many overpasses that are in that area. So his story has been kind of going back and forth, and then he, when he was uh, 
in custody not too long ago. He talked about this story about Maggie having an affair and Alec walked in and that's how that happened. So he's that issue is going to be a problem for the state. And so I think they're going to want to make sure that they need him. And he's got something really important to say because on cross, I, I think they'd be licking their chops to get a hold of him. So, uh, Chandler, any idea when we're going to find out if Cousin Eddie is going to take the stand and if he's going to talk about the roadside shooting? Yeah, any day now. Uh, we were expecting possibly Wednesday, but we may hear from financial witnesses first, but he is a part of the financial witnesses. Remember, his name was mentioned by the forensic bank examiner because Alec Murdoch was sending him check after check after check. I believe it's almost like $2.4 million that stolen money from his law firm and his clients that he was you know, making out checks to Curtis Eddie Smith. So we may be hearing from him sooner than uh, later, but it will be uh, really dynamic when it does actually happen in the courtroom. Great job, Chanley Painter in the Low Country tonight. Matt Harris, great to see you. Impact of Influence and Mr. Body Bags, Joseph Scott Morgan.